Good afternoon. We are currently following a high speed pursuit. This is in northeast Houston on Aldine Mail. And you can see who police are following right now. This looks to be an older model SUV, gray in color, now making their way through the streets of northeast Houston. At this point, we're trying to find out more about the circumstances surrounding this uh, chase, how it started, and why. I can tell you that law enforcement will want to know if this driver is armed because that would impact how they actually approach this vehicle. We'll also find out how many people are in this chase vehicle and if there are children inside it could complicate the situation. We see a big truck that's there that has slowed down this vehicle, but you can see police are in hot pursuit right behind in that white vehicle. This is southbound on Christman, we understand. We don't know why police initially tried to pull this driver over, uh, but again, he appears now to be slowing down a little bit, was making erratic moves uh, just moments before. Right now he's moving eastbound, he or she eastbound on Isom as authorities uh, maintain this chase. Again, not sure what the initial call was on this vehicle. Now, if they do believe that this vehicle, this SUV has been stolen or they believe it was used to commit a crime, officers will operate under the assumption that the suspect is armed and that will change the way they pursue this suspect. It will also change the way they confront the suspect when this is all said and done. Now, there are a lot of unanswered questions still at this point, but this we know. The guy is driving this SUV, weighs about 6,500 pounds. It can do a lot of damage out there on the streets. He's driving fast as he weaves his way through these streets, and these are kind of off the beaten path. People could be uh, unsuspecting, not knowing this vehicle is coming along, and uh, just made a turn on Aldine Westfield. So again, you see up in the northeast part of uh, Harris County. Don't know when he's in Finland is driving this car. And these people drive erratically, they drive dangerously, and he's been doing this now for 10 minutes. 10 minutes or so. Uh, we understand this pursuit, even though it's been uh, just for about 10 minutes or so, 100 miles an hour was the rate of speed at one point. Glad to see that that has slowed down, but you can still see this driver weaving in and out, uh, going against the flow of traffic at one point there. As we approach Tuesday afternoon rush hour, Greg, you mentioned this is off the beaten path, thankfully, but still there is traffic, people making their way home this afternoon. Uh, as authorities remain in pursuit of this vehicle. Well, also keep in mind that whatever they have done at this point, one thing is certain now, that whoever is behind this wheel, they will face charges now because they refuse to stop. At the very least, they're going to face charges involving this chase, most likely felony, evading arrest charges, and who knows what else by the time this is over. Let's just hope no one ends up getting hurt. We're going to also be watching to see just how police officers pursuing this will try to stop this chase. If they do, they might try roadblocks. Uh, they might try a rolling roadblock where one patrol car gets in front of the chase vehicle, tries to slow down while the pursuing officers kind of close in from behind and just kind of squeeze him in. But again, you can see as he just makes his way through northeast Houston, through these back roads, doesn't really know where he's going to go, looking for a way out, but very rarely do they find a way out. We well, hear he's on Abner Street now, kind of uh, weaving back and forth all over the place. Don't know if anyone else is in this SUV other than that driver, but authorities are sticking with this. Well, sometimes they will throw out these road spikes if they can get an idea of where they think they're going to be going. It will flatten the tire. Sometimes police just get lucky they have a flat or they run out of gas, so we can only hope that it ends that peacefully. But again, as you say, just weaving from side to side, I think as much as anything, kind of taunting police, saying, you know, I don't know where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, but I just know at this point I'm not stopping. Rate of speed not too quick right here. Uh, it was a lot moving a lot faster a few minutes ago. We understand he reached a mile per hour of 100. Um, slowing down here to make this turn. These are tight turns around this residential area. You're hopeful that there aren't pedestrians as he moves southbound here on Imperial. Well, and you know, we've been covering chases like this for years. And if this guy gets away, it's going to be a first. Uh, he'd have to be, you know, David Blaine or Houdini to pull off some kind of magic like this. You see him kind of hanging out of the vehicle. It looks like his left arm hanging out the side. So we know there's one person inside at least. We don't know how many others or why they're wanting to stop this particular vehicle. But, uh, you know, we don't know if he's driving erratically on purpose or maybe he's under the influence. We just don't know at this point. And also keep in mind, sometimes these vehicle chases turn into foot chases, and now he's going the wrong way on the feeder road. Uh, he's going against the grain of traffic, and this could end badly. And again, he's uh, making his pursuit 
Uh, this is the feeder road to the Hardy Toll Road. So uh, who knows where he's heading at this point? Again, in northeast Houston. And drivers are, are of course, uh, he is driving southbound. Drivers making their way around this guy. I can't imagine that scene as you're just trying to make your way home and you have this SUV coming right at you. But again, he's heading down uh, the feeder on the wrong side there, making a left. At least he's out of At the At least he's back, on, yeah, he's back on the right side of the road. The big question exactly. for police is why is this guy running? We've seen it all from past experience. I can tell you that sometimes these chases start when officers are following what they believe is a stolen vehicle. We don't know that that's the case here. Occasionally, officers believe the suspects are involved in some other type of criminal activity. In the past, the officers have tried to stop a driver who they believe is under the influence of a controlled substance. And the way he's driving, that would certainly make you suspicious. Sometimes police believe that there's something in the vehicle that might be illegal. Sometimes the driver just runs because they know they've committed another crime and they don't want to be caught. Uh, police might even be trying to serve a warrant for their arrest. At this point, there are just so many unanswered questions. Exactly right, and I, I would assume they've already run that plate to determine who this vehicle is registered to. But this guy just uh, making some crazy moves in his SUV, just weaving back and forth, not going too quick at all. And uh, as you mentioned, Greg, we're hoping this ends peacefully. We'll stay with this until this pursuit is over. But well, uh, the erratic driving continues from this guy. Absolutely. And, and regardless of, of what they're doing or why, this kind of wild, unpredictable, reckless driving, frequent lane changes, weaving in and out of traffic, side to side, going the wrong directions, uh, it puts other lives in danger. And that's certainly what's happening here today. If you're just now joining us, uh, thank you for watching KHOU 11 News at 4 o'clock. We are following this uh, police pursuit that has been going on in northeast Houston for about the past 20 minutes or so. This SUV now heading back towards Hardy, where this driver was going in the wrong direction, at least right here. He's going in the right direction, but he's weaving all over the place. We don't know why authorities initially tried to pull him over, but he did not yield. He did reach speeds of up to 100 miles an hour about 10 minutes ago. He slowed down a bit, but now he's going back and forth and kind of all over the place as he heads northbound on Hardy. And you see the Hardy Toll Road just there to the left, and he is uh, currently he on the feeder road. saw that spike strip that and authorities... That, that may help in this pursuit or at least slow it down to, to some degree. Again, it's important to know if the suspect is armed at this point. You see him weaving. It appears that one tire may be flattened at this point just from the way the, uh, the vehicle is responding now. If the, if the officers feel like they are threatened, and he just rarely uh, almost uh, nicked that car if he didn't hit it, mm -hmm. uh, if they feel threatened, they are trained to use deadly force under circumstances like that, like this. Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. So you saw the spike strip go down. Uh, unclear if his, if his tires cleared it or not. Hopefully not. And then he made that right, that wide right, and clipped that truck. So we're watching to see if he's slowing down at all. As he heads eastbound on Mooney, again, we're about 20 minutes or so into this pursuit. Not sure why this guy is running from police. You know, we have seen him use that spike strip in the past. First, you don't know where you're going to throw out the spike strips, and frequently it's just guesswork. Authorities get lucky, and the suspects sometimes roll over it, but sometimes it also punctures a tire of one of the following chase vehicles, one of the police vehicles. Secondly, even if the chase vehicle hits it, it it loses its tires. We've seen suspects ride their rims, doing anything they can to get away. This guy has shown no indication that he's willing to pull over, so he could ride his rims for a while. And a car with a flat tire is even more unstable and unpredictable, and there's a possibility of a rollover, but this has now turned into more of a slow-speed pursuit than even a high-speed pursuit. He's on Wedgwood right now, and we do understand that he does have a, one flat tire, at least one flat tire, so that's slowing down his rate of speed, and hopefully this will be coming to a soon, very shortly. He's riding on one rim, we understand, as he kind of still makes his way down. And, and in many cases, these aren't so much high-speed chases as they are just shadowing of the suspects, because police don't want to really lose them. And it looks like this could be coming to an end right now. And here, this has turned into the foot chase, and he is off. Abandoning that vehicle after that tire was punctured by that spike strip. Authorities there in hot pursuit of this guy. Through a little wooded section here. And this is where the news helicopter, not even the news helicopters, but the police helicopter will come yeah. in handy as well. They can keep that eye in the sky to find out exactly where he's going. Looks like he's jumping fences, moving into backyards. You see the police officer in pursuit here. 
He is on Abner right now near Imperial, still running. And now he's had the brilliant idea of bailing out of the vehicle and trying to run away. And indeed, they run, but usually they don't get too far. This usually, they just get road rash for their troubles here after being tackled by a team of pursuing officers. We don't know exactly where he is because we're behind this tree, uh, but we didn't see him come out of this area. So we'll continue to circle our cameras around and see if we can bring him into view. And if you look behind that, they it looks him. like a van there. It looks like the three or four pursuing officers do have him in custody and on the ground. Good to hear and see that this all did end peacefully. He didn't collide with anybody, with the exception of that one pickup truck hitting yeah, he, uh, the bed may, of that truck. Yeah, he may nick that one. Right, uh, but he is in police custody again. Unclear why he chose to run from police. And then he ditched the vehicle, made a run for it. And now, there he's, now he's going to be arrested. He's going to be taken down to Central Booking, where he will be charged. And unless something went terribly wrong in there, he'll definitely be charged in this particular case with evading arrest and who knows what else. By the time this is all over. But just thank goodness no one appears to have been hurt or killed in this pursuit, uh, as could have been the case. And he led authorities on this chase for about uh, 23 minutes or so uh, as they first tried to, to pull him over for what we don't know. But uh, he decided not to yield and went on this pursuit through northeast Houston. They threw out that spike strip, and that seemed to do the trick to at least one of his tires. And, and we've been following a chase earlier today as well. In mm -hmm. fact, just a few minutes ago, our helicopter was over the scene of a chase that had just ended, and this one popped up. Houston police say they have at least two of these chases every single day. Many times we have a chance to show them to you, many times we don't. Sometimes there have been days where they've had as many as a dozen of these, so it's not that unusual, but uh, this one at least has come to a peaceful conclusion, and it looks like they have the suspect there in custody. We'll continue to follow this, find out more information for you, figure out what's going on, and have more coming up as we continue on KHOU 11 News at 4. And we do have more breaking news to get to right now. A bizarre and terrible scene. This in downtown Houston as a man sets himself on fire. We can tell you this happened right out on the steps of a courthouse on Fannin Street. Our Sherman Chow is there live to let us know what happened. Sherman?